Hi all, in this video we are going to see about aqueous humor. So aqueous humor as well as a separate aspect glaucoma has been asked many times for different university exams. So we will try to understand the basic concept. So aqueous humor is basically a protein free clear fluid which is circulating inside the eye that helps to uh, supply the metabolites to the lens and the cornea. So we know that here we don't have any blood vessel and thus the function of supplying the nutrients and taking off the waste products is done by this fluid aqueous humor. It is produced continuously by the ciliary processes and the rate of formation is around 2 to 3 microliter per minute. And the complete turnover of aqueous humor occurs in about an hour. So constantly the ciliary processes are producing aqueous humor and there is, there is always a circulation of aqueous humor within the eye. So what is the composition of aqueous humor? We know that aqueous humor is basically produced from plasma. So it is similar to plasma but is usually protein free and contains water, glucose, electrolytes and there is a high concentration of ascorbic acid. The refractive index of aqueous humor is around 1.33. Now, how, so how is aqueous humor formed? So we know that aqueous humor is formed in the ciliary processes and this occurs mainly by three mechanisms. The first mechanism is the osmotic water flux wherein the water movement occurs due to osmosis and even passive processes like diffusion uh, also has an important role to play here because it is by diffusion that molecules such as oxygen and carbon dioxide are diffused into the fluid that is surrounding this. Another important mechanism is ultrafiltration. So basically this there is ultrafiltration of the fluid that is based on the pressure surrounding this. For example the hydrostatic pressure of the capillaries based on the pressures there is ultrafiltration occurring so for the formation of aqueous humor. So this ultrafiltration is dependent on many other factors. Remember the Starling's forces which determine the uh, direction of flow of liquid. So just like that here the ultrafiltration depends on the pressures like the intraocular pressure, the capillary hydrostatic pressure etc. And the third mechanism is active secretion. In this case we have got active pumps like the sodium hydrogen exchanger, the sodium potassium ATPase pump and we also have conversion of carbon dioxide in water to bicarbonate and hydrogen ion and this bicarbonate along with chloride is also pumped into the aqueous humor. So these are the three different mechanisms by which aqueous humor is formed. Diffusion, ultrafiltration and active secretion formed are first is the diffusion where which is a passive process by which the small lipid molecules like oxygen, carbon dioxide etc. passively diffuse from the fenestrated capillaries of the ciliary body into the stroma and it is driven by the concentration gradients. Then we've got ultrafiltration which is because of the increased hydrostatic pressure from the capillaries which forces the plasma components through the fenestrated capillaries into the ciliary stroma and it is influenced by the capillary pressure as well as intraocular pressure. And the third mechanism is active secretion which is the primary that is the primary active transport which is energy dependent and it involves the active transport of ions especially we've got the sodium potassium ATPs pumps the carbonic anhydrase enzyme which catalyzes this reaction carbon dioxide to water to give bicarbonate and bicarbonate and sodium moves into the posterior chamber drawing the water osmotically. So these are the three mechanisms diffusion, ultrafiltration as well as active secretion. So now we will see the flow of aqueous humor. So as I said the ciliary processes produce the aqueous humor and this aqueous humor will actually move from this posterior chamber go through the pupil see this is the iris so it goes through the pupil and enters the anterior chamber so it is produced by ciliary processes in the posterior chamber flows through the pupil and reaches the anterior chamber and then here we've got this trabecular meshwork so it is absorbed via the trabecular meshwork and drained into the canal of Schlem. Canal of Schlem is basically a canal that is present at the iridocorneal angle. Iridocorneal angle means angle between iris and cornea. This is the iris and this is the cornea. So the iridocorneal angle we have got this trabecular mesh work connected to the canal of Schlem and thus it is drained via the canal of Schlem. Now regarding this we have got an important point to understand also. 
we said that we've got an outflow tract right this outflow of aqueous humor is important in many diseases so we'll see more about how the aqueous humor is drained off so one method as i already said is via this trabecular meshwork so see it goes to the trabecular meshwork and from there it goes into this uh, canal of slime and from there it's drained via the interscleral channels to the episcleral wings so this is one outflow tract and this is the major outflow tract which is called the trabecular outflow so see here produced by the ciliary processes goes from the posterior chamber to the anterior chamber from there absorbed by the trabecular meshwork to the canal of slime interscleral channels and episcleral veins so this is the major one which is called the trabecular outflow now we've got one more outflow tract which is from this uh, after production of the ciliary processes when it reaches the anterior chamber it goes through the interstitial spaces of the ciliary muscle and from there it goes to the supracoroidal space and from there to the it drains into the veins so this is um, this is another outflow tract which is called the uveoscleral outflow tract even though when compared to the trabecular outflow it is not that prominent still we've got one more outflow tract which is the uveoscleral outflow so two outflow tracts one is a trabecular outflow and other is a uveoscleral outflow so thus we've got two outflow tracts the trabecular outflow which is uh, starting from the trabecular meshwork slime canal interscleral channels episcleral veins and then we've got the uveoscleral outflow which uh, goes to the ciliary body supracoroidal space and finally to the venous circulation of ciliary body so what are the functions of aqueous humor so aqueous humor helps to maintain the proper intraocular pressure and therefore the shape of the eyeball it plays an important role in the metabolic uh, giving the nutrients and uh, removing the extra metabolites from the avascular cornea and lens and also help in maintaining the optical transparency so three roles intraocular pressure metabolic role as well as maintain optical transparency so now why are we discussing so much about aqueous humor because there is a very important disease that can occur if this aqueous humor circulation is not right and which is called glaucoma so why do we have glaucoma see we have glaucoma because this production or outflow if the production or outflow of aqueous humor is not proper we can have a condition in which there might be excess excess aqueous humor and that is called glaucoma so here glaucoma can occur due to two reasons suppose there is an increased trabecular resistance see suppose there is this trabecular meshwork is not uh, very free to move then what happens then the outflow tract is blocked which means the aqueous humor will build up in the anterior and the posterior chamber another uh, mechanism is sometimes this iridocorneal angle that might not be that open you know that the canal of slime is at the iridocorneal angle so suppose there is a ballooning of the iris like this then also what happens is the outflow tract is not open for aqueous humor to go and thus here also there would be accumulation of aqueous humor so that this this can cause an accumulation of aqueous humor which leads an increase in intraocular pressure which is called glaucoma so what is the problem if there is an increase in intraocular pressure if there is an increase in intraocular pressure that can cause blindness and the important causes of increase in intraocular pressure is one increased trabecular resistance because of blockage of the trabecular meshwork by debris inflammation or fibrosis or increased resistance to outflow through the canal of slime so these are the two mechanisms by which there can be an elevated intraocular pressure so if the cause is an increased trabecular resistance then that is called open angle glaucoma it is called open angle glaucoma because here the iridocorneal angle is open that is why it is called open angle glaucoma so in this case in open angle glaucoma there would only be a gradual increase in the intraocular pressure so what about the second condition if there is a ballooning of the iris and blockage of the filtration angle then that is called closed angle glaucoma because here the iridocorneal angle or the filtration angle is closed so here the iris balloons forwards blocks the filtration angle and thus decreases the aqueous outflow now this is a 
medical emergency because there will be a sudden rise in the intraocular pressure. So when you check, um, when the ophthalmologist check the eyes or the fundus, you can see that the, because of this increase in intraocular pressure, there is compression of the optic nerve fibers at the optic disc and not only that, there will be blockage of the axonal flow. There will be lack of nutrient supply, so there can even be death of the optic nerve fibers. Similarly, there can also be compression of the retinal arteries which can reduce the retinal blood supply. So these are the problems of what happens if the aqueous humor accumulates. If aqueous humor accumulates, there will be increased IOP which can lead to death of optic nerve fibers as well as cutting of the retinal artery. So how do we treat this condition? We can either decrease the aqueous humor production by giving beta blockers like timolol or carbonic anhydrase inhibitors so that the production of aqueous humor is decreased or we can increase the aqueous outflow by giving cholinergic agonists like pilocarpin as well as prostaglandins. So this is how we can manage the condition. Thus to summarize we have seen uh, the definition of aqueous humor, what is the composition, the production when, wherein we talked about the three different mechanisms, the flow of aqueous humor and as well as the outflow tracts, the trabecular as well as the uveoscleral, the functions as well as the applied aspects in which uh, we discuss glaucoma in detail. So I hope this was useful for you. Thank you.